Looking at buying a new or used Class A motorhome? We'll show you one of the most popular models that's been around for a while that just may be what you're looking for. See what you think. Also, we joined Jeff Johnston on a camping trip as he prepares one of his favorite Dutch oven meals. And later, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us the top five emergency items you should always have in your RV. These stories and more, plus our Thetford Smart Tote 2 contest coming up on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Class A diesel pusher motorhomes are becoming more refined all the time. They're equipped with the luxuries and amenities most desired by this type of customer. Well, the new Itasca Soleil motorhome from Winnebago Industries is a great example of this new crop of coach. Let's take a closer look. If it's a Class A motorhome you're after, going with a brand like Itasca by Winnebago is a safe bet. Getting there is a big part of the fun in the Soleil. The dashboard is a familiar arrangement with sensible controls and enough easy to see gauges to monitor all important vehicle functions. An MP3 music player connector and Bluetooth cell phone microphone are part of the built-in electronics. The touchscreen radio includes rear and side view monitors and calls for some owner's manual time to understand its features. The passenger seat includes a flip-up table with a non-skid surface for convenient electronic device use. The coach is built on a Freightliner XCS chassis with a diesel pusher. Back there, we've got a Cummins 340 horsepower ISV engine backed up by an Allison 6-speed transmission. It's a terrific power combination. It moves the rig down the road with ease, and uh, the transmission has plenty of gears to make sure that we always have the best combination of torque and, and horsepower hitting the road. The coach rides on a new way air suspension system with airbags front and back. Airbags keep the ride smooth, take all the harshness out, yet they maintain a degree of control that's really nice. It's not at all mushy, it's, uh, it's a little bit more firm, which you know a lot of drivers kind of prefer, as I do, being uh, feeling like I've got a little more of a grip on the coach. Back roads and narrow bridges are no problem in a big coach for a moderately experienced motorhome driver. Our journey found us at Oregon's Odell Lake and the beautiful Shelter Cove Resort, a popular fishing location with a campground well suited to a full-size Class A. Maneuvering and parking a Class A requires some caution and planning ahead, but with practice and paying attention, it's not difficult. Setting up and plugging into the utility box, strangely located on the wrong side of the campsite, we deployed the slide outs and readied for a fun camping adventure. The full wall curbside slide out moves out about 15 inches. That's not much, but it's enough. Well, that 15 inches of movement on the part of the slide out may not seem like much outside, but inside here where it counts, it makes a significant difference in space. For example, here in the bedroom, you've got a wonderful wide aisle that lets you get access to this huge storage closet. It's about six feet long of hanging wardrobe space. That's a terrific amount of storage for people in a coach like this. And it also gives you access to the bed for making the bed and such. Speaking of the bed, 
This one is equipped with the optional Ideal Rest air inflated mattress. Each side has an adjustable feature here that allows you to regulate how firm it is. Well, Pam and I slept on this several nights and unfortunately, we tried everything from high to medium to low. We could not find a spot in here that was comfortable for us. Now, that's just us, but we would probably prefer a regular mattress in place of this option. Now, another feature in this coach is wonderful drawer glides. These are on full suspension glides that let you get all the way to the back of the drawer. That's a typical Winnebago feature. And the cabinets are finished in coffee glazed honey cherry cabinetry. I've got a few coffee glazed cabinets inside the house, but maybe not on purpose. But anyway, up here ahead a little bit for privacy. The bedroom can close off with the sliding pocket door. Operates well and it locks securely for travel, so it's not going to come open. This cabinet with the louvered doors here is just directly behind the refrigerator. Normally, you can select an option that has a stacked washer dryer in here. When you don't have the washer dryer, it's a terrific pantry storage space with adjustable shelves, which is nice. And we personally, we find the pantry space a little more valuable than the washer dryer. We can always do that when we're at a campground someplace. Another advantage to the slide out room is it gives you this wonderful wide aisle. This is more than 36 inches of space and you can actually have two robust full-size people passing in here without any problems. The extra wide aisle also gives you easy access to the bathroom here. The bathroom includes a ceramic toilet, stainless steel sink in, a, in the laminate countertop, plenty of storage space, and a full stand-up shower with a glass enclosure that has a really smooth sliding nice operating glass door. We'll continue our tour of the Soleil interior right after these messages from our sponsors, so stay tuned. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaCam, another great product from Thetford. We didn't make the majestic mountains or the rugged terrain or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our closer look at the new Itasca Soleil Class A motorhome, a gem of a new RV. This particular coach has an option, which is a full-size residential-style refrigerator. Operates on 120 volts AC, so it only operates when you're plugged in or when you're using the uh, built-in inverter and the inverter batteries. Now over here on this side of the aisle is something, a feature that Winnebago's been using they call the One Place. And it, what it does is it contains in one space a bunch of vehicle control and monitor features, ranging from the slide out room controls down to the power management system, the inverter controls, and uh, the levels check, checks, water pumps, air conditioner controls, and so on. Very convenient to have it all in one place. Over here in the kitchen, which our family cook really enjoyed, by the way, we have a large size convection microwave oven, Whirlpool. It'll handle a pretty good size bird in there if you fit it in right. Corian countertop with removable panels that cover up the stove so you can, if you're not using the stove, you have all kinds of extra storage space and working space here. Backed up by this grouted in tile, very classy looking backsplash arrangement. And up here, of course, you have the sink. It's covered up by a couple of panels that are removable. Again, you can put the panels in place, and that allows you to have all this working space for preparing meals. Most of our meals are done outside the coach, because we kind of prefer living on the outside and just doing a little bit of prep inside. But if this weather's bad, there's plenty of space inside for meal preparation. 
Now one feature about this material, it's Corian, it's nice and classy, it looks good, but it has an interesting sort of a, a pattern or texture, or not texture, but a, a pattern to the surface that makes it look like it's always dirty. And this is something that several people have observed besides us, so it's not just us. We would probably, if we had a choice, select a different type of Corian for our counter. Now directly opposite the kitchen here is a storage hutch that also includes down below a garage for the inn table. Now that's simply a table that rolls out of here, parks in front of the inn lounge U-shaped dinette. And that table can set up with wings on both sides to make it into a good sized table operation that gives you plenty of working space or meal or fun or cards or whatever you're going to do. And the inn lounge itself is pretty darn impressive so we'll go take a look at it. Now the inn lounge feature is a standard feature on the Model 34 coach. The Model 38 has a smaller four-person dinette. This feature, as you can see, is a gigantic U-shaped sofa. And by extending the ends with the, this mechanism, allows the ends to slide out, and you move the cushions, insert the, the, the removable piece, and you have a gigantic U-shaped sofa and lounge that has plenty of seating space for a lot of people. In this area, you have the usual features you find that are convenient. Uh, reading lamps overhead. And there's also very large, deep storage compartments. And storage, of course, is always at a premium inside of a coach like this. Now, Winnebago claims that this uh, in, in lounge sofa unit will be able to accommodate six people comfortably to eat and maybe eight people for a having fun, you know, environment. Back outside, we found the roomy storage bays handle a huge volume of personal cargo. Door and campsite power awnings provide extra cover when the weather gets bad. We set up our humble campsite and prepped a meal over the fire. Rotisserie chicken on the ouse pit and corn on the grill. There's a good dinner ahead. Well, both the passenger and driver seats turn around so that you have extra seating for people to enjoy the socializing in the rest of the coach. When the evening is late, your campfire is burned down, you're settled inside for the evening. Of course, uh, you reach over, turn on your fireplace. There's a little heater in here that cranks out some warmth to keep your toes warm as well. And then, uh, kick up your leg rest, lay back your recliner, and you're ready to enjoy an evening in comfort. And this is one of the fun things about RVs. For more information about the Itasca Soleil Motorhome, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Coming up next, we'll join Jeff out at the campsite. We'll be right back. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. Well, it's a beautiful weekend out here in camp, and it's time to get some dinner going. So we have the Dutch oven set up, we got the coals that are, boy, they're, yeah, they're ready to go. Uh, and our ingredients are all lined up, so we'll uh, get started here and, and show you how we make up our Dutch oven beans, potatoes, and sausage. We get things going with a homemade fire starter under the briquette chimney. This handy device kicks off the briquettes without using petroleum type fire starter chemicals. Next, we cut up three small potatoes into bite sized chunks. 
For serving convenience, we cut two packages of chicken bratwurst sausages into four chunks each. So we'll put a little bit of olive oil in the pan here to heat up. Doesn't take much because the sausage is going to have its own goop in there, of course. Dump in our sausage. This is some very nice uh, chicken with oh, a couple of different spices. But we use We Like Chicken Sausage because it's a little bit less fat. You don't absolutely have to brown the sausage first, depending on the type, but this is uncooked sausage, so we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of brown on this before we throw the beans and the potatoes in and everything else. Mmm, smells pretty good already. Beer bread is our complement to the sausage and beans. A temporary foil liner makes a good spot for blending the bread mix. We use a local brew to help flavor the bread. It's a bit of a mess, but it works. Rub a little butter on your hands to help keep the dough from sticking. The Lodge Dutch ovens come pre-seasoned, but we rubbed in some butter to help keep the bread from sticking. Unceremoniously plop the dough into the pan, leave it in a lump, cover, and it's good to go. All right, things are starting to look a little bit brown, and man, is it smelling good. Time to pull the lid off. And it looks like the sausage is browned up nicely. So we're gonna move this off to the side and add the potatoes that we cut up earlier. And we'll get those a little bit pre-cooked before the beans go in. All right, we'll start with the chili beans and the black beans and a little bit of garbanzos for, uh, for a light little bit of color. Same with the uh, eh, kind of white bean. A little bit of corn for color. A little more garbanzos. A little bit of this uh, uh, Ninkasi Special Beer Run IPA, uh, just to add a little bit of moisture to the whole thing. Worked in the beer bread, ought to do just fine here too. And then, of course, we stir that stuff up, get the potatoes and everything going, cover it up, and we'll see what happens in a little while. Meanwhile, it's time to take a look at the uh, beer bread. That it, it, uh, it is puffing up nicely. started up a few more coals here. As the coals started burning down, we, we began the first coals a little early, so we started a few more, added them on here, and uh, it looks like everything is perking along just fine. Well, the beer bread is coming along nicely, but it's starting to get, it's a little brown on the bottom, but it's okay. So what we did, was we moved all of the coals from the bottom up here on the top to put the heat mainly down, down off the top of the bread. We're getting close, things ought to be just about ready here. Hmm. Water's boiling. The smell is really good. Everything looks like it's blending together nicely. All right, first of all, the beer bread is about done. Chewy crust and a robust interior texture make this bread a terrific side dish to stews and the like. All right, this is about done. It's been boiling for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Get a few chunks of the sausage in there. Feel how hot that is on the bottom on my hand. Looks pretty darn good. We have the bean mix with corn and whatnot, and the sausage, chicken sausage, so it's a little bit healthy. And beer bread, a one pot wonder. All things considered, not an all bad way to start a meal for a, an evening of camping. 
Definitely recommend uh, Dutch ovens as a, uh, uh, an addition to your camping supplies. Cheers. For more information about Dutch oven cooking, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. You have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system. You can expect to make a lot of new friends. Roll on TV and Thetford are giving away six LX Model Smart Tote 2s, one each week for six weeks starting July 1st. To enter, just visit our website at rollingontv.com and click on the Smart Tote 2 LX contest page and sign up for the drawings. Now, isn't that simple? Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. We purchase RVs to travel the country and build lasting memories with family and friends. RVs are meant for relaxation and fun, but what happens in the event of an emergency? When you travel to a different camping destination in your RV on a regular basis, you need to be prepared for an emergency that can happen anytime and anywhere. This list of emergency items could be much longer, but I want to concentrate on five emergency items I think every RV owner should keep in their RV. Let's get started. The first item on my list is a portable weather radio. In today's world of modern technology, some folks think a smartphone with a weather app is all you need, but the problem is you travel through some remote parts of the country in your RV where you don't always have a good signal or can't get data. A good portable weather radio can operate on batteries or 120 volt AC power and will warn you of potential weather hazards in and around the area where you are camping. Visit www.noaa.gov for more information. Next on my list is a reputable RV emergency roadside assistance plan. There are lots of plans available, so take time to research the plan and select one that fits your particular needs. Look for a plan designed specifically for RVs. When you break down in the middle of nowhere on your vacation, you'll be glad you invested in a good plan. It can pay for towing expenses, a place to stay while the RV is being repaired, for fuel, or for getting in a locked RV and to repair a flat tire. When you pack the RV for your next trip, make sure you include a basic road hazard kit. At a minimum, it should include a good set of jumper cables, a heavy duty flashlight, one or more reflective warning triangles, some basic hand tools, a fluorescent safety vest, a portable gas can, and a good first aid kit if you don't already have one in the RV. A few simple items can get you out of a jam and assist in staying safe until help arrives. This might sound silly, but I recommend keeping clothing in the RV for all weather conditions. You might be traveling south during the summer months, but you never know when cold or wet weather will hit or when the heat might quit working in the RV. It's best to be prepared by packing some cold weather clothing on those warm weather trips. In addition to a good roadside emergency assistance plan, I recommend a reputable RV extended service contract. Again, there are lots of these services available, so shop around for the best plan prior to purchasing one. The roadside assistance plan helps you in the event of an unexpected emergency, and the extended service plan helps pay for the necessary repairs. Nothing will ruin a trip quicker than a $500 or $1,000 repair bill when you least expect it. I mentioned earlier that this list could be much longer, but this is a good start. Add to this list to suit your particular needs and you'll be ready for an emergency when you least expect it. And to learn more about your RV, visit www.rveducation101.com. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's program. 
And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories from current and past shows, visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production. Thank you.